new year, but same intro. Say it with me. Hey everyone, how's it going? And in the spirit of being a new year, I want to try something slightly different, but pretty much the same as what you expect. The legendary birds were some of my most popular videos, and honestly, I never even thought I would do all 150 Pokemon. But I really wanted to do more legendary runs, and unfortunately, there are no more legendaries in Generation 1. So for a limited time, we're going to step into Generation 2 to ask ourselves which legendary beast, Raikou, Suicune, Entei, is best. This is a legitimate question because the legendary beasts, unlike the legendary birds, seem very, very balanced. I mean, they have the exact same stats. The distributions, well, if we look at the distributions, I really think that Entei and Raikou have some significant advantages. Probably Raikou would be the one I would say has the best stat distribution. I also have no idea how to pronounce it, so I'll pronounce it every different way, so at least one of the times I'm guaranteed to be right. It's a good strategy. Suicune, however, has really defensive stats, which make it good sometimes in the competitive game, but may hurt it in the solo run. Now, one thing I will note is that in terms of move pool, I'd probably say that it's the reverse order with Suicune getting Surf being the best, Entei getting Flamethrower, and Raikou, well, being stuck with Spark. So that's going to be very, very interesting. With that said, we're just about ready to start our run, but because we're in a new game, we should talk about a couple of the unique rules. For those of you who are new, the standard rules are no items in battle, I'm allowed other Pokemon for HMs, but they can't appear in battle, and we get our starter by modifying the game's code slightly to change one of the starter Pokemon into one of the legendary beasts, always the one that is weak to whatever the rival will use, so it's consistent with how the game was supposed to be. There are a couple other special rules that I've added for gold and silver. One that might surprise you is that I've banned hidden power for these runs, and my reasoning was pretty simple. Rather than use a code and get a perfect starter, I just reset a bunch of times as I always do, trying to get as good as I can by looking at stats and comparing it to what an ideal level 5 Pokemon would be, so it's not perfect. But when I'm doing that, there's no way I can guarantee what hidden power I get, and which one I would get could radically alter the run, especially if I got something like hidden power ice. Thus, in order to make these runs replicable and consistent without cheating, it was just easier to ban hidden power completely. And there's one other weird rule I'm going to do, which you're going to see right now. We're in Sprout Tower, and although it is mandatory in Heart Gold Soul Silver, in regular Gold Silver Crystal, this is an optional area, and it's just used to get Flash, which you technically don't need. However, Darkness in Generation 2 works differently. Rather than just seeing the outlines of the wall so you can kind of figure out where you're going, it's just pitch black. You see nothing. And so navigating dark areas, of which there are a couple we're going to do, just miserable. Especially if you have the sound turned off so you can't hear if you're running into a wall or something. So just to make things easier and because all the three beasts are going to play by the same rules, we're going to go through Sprout Tower first. And I was not even going to mention it except for the fact it is going to have an impact on the Falconer battle since I'm going to be at a higher level than I otherwise would be. Awesome! Now that all of that is out of the way, let's get to our gym battles and we're going to start off with Falconer. Entei has a bit of an annoying time versus Falconer because he has the move Mud Slap. We're at level 10, so we have to use Bite, which is our only attacking move. It's a base 60 power special move, but it has the chance to flinch. And honestly, even though we got hit by a Mud Slap, Falconer went down pretty easy. Now, Raikou, I battled one additional trainer trying to get it Thundershock before Falconer, but I messed up. Unfortunately, I didn't have it for Pidgey, but I did have it for Pidgeotto, making the battle just as easy, but slightly quicker. For Suicune, like with Entei, I didn't bother battling an extra trainer and leveling up, so we're just going to use Bite, but we're not going to get hit by Mudslap because unlike with Entei and Raikou, it's not super effective, not that it really mattered anyway. And you can see at level 11, we get our base 40 power elemental move, Thundershock, Ember, and Water Gun. Great. So, Falconer was pretty easy, how about Bugsy? As you'd expect, Entei has a pretty easy time versus Bugsy. We're at level 14, 
Don't forget, all these Pokemon are in the slow level up group, so they level up slowly. Scyther's best move is Fury Cutter, which is only base 10 power. It does decent enough damage, I guess, but doesn't have enough time to build up to be really threatening. And we knock it out and Kakuna with just 18 HP taken off. Raikou also is going to have a relatively easy time because it too has a super effective move, at least against the Scyther. One thing you'll notice in this battle, and it's something I've mentioned in other Gold Silver runs, is that the order in which the AI sends out their Pokemon is going to be different. They always send out the same Pokemon first, but you'll notice instead of Scyther coming out second, it's going to be Kakuna and Raikou actually two shots. Because remember, it has higher special attack than Entei does. Entei's special attack is actually not that great, at least comparatively. So Raikou, pretty easy. Suicune, however, struggled a little bit versus Bugsy because it doesn't have a super effective move. Obviously, it's going to have no problem versus the Metapod, and Kakuna comes out second, but look how little I'm doing to Scyther. And remember I talked about how Fury Cutter has a chance to stack? Well, it does here, and for the first time in any of the runs, we've suffered a loss. That means I'm going to take an optional battle here, trying to level up Suicune just a little bit more. The hope is, at one level higher, since it's a legendary Pokemon, Suicune will be able to do just a little bit more damage and take back just a little bit less damage, and thus could maybe defeat Scyther. Well, in this battle, once again, we'll knock out Metapod and Kakuna rather quickly, but the key thing is whether we defeat Scyther a turn earlier, and due to a critical hit, we actually do. I'm not sure with Barry equipped whether that crit would matter or not, but frankly, with legendary Pokemon, I'm just gonna take the victory. This was an unfortunate gym for Suicune just because it doesn't have access to Surf yet and without a move to deal quickly with Scyther, Scyther is really powerful. Bugsy has a bit of a misleading reputation as being easy. If you don't have a Pokemon super effective, Scyther is actually really, really good. And speaking of someone who's really, really good, Whitney with rollout on Miltank is going to be pretty good against Entei. Clefairy is always going to be annoying because it does like to use Metronome. Here it uses Double Slap, which is also kind of random, and we get a critical hit. You'll see we got Headbutt out of Ilex Forest, and because Entei has better physical attack than special attack, I use it, but not even close. Thankfully, there are a ton of trainers around Goldenrod. Not too many are mandatory, though, so we may have to take some optional battles and come back. How about the other beasts? Raikou uses Thundershock and gets a crit against Clefairy and knocks it out in two hits. Miltank, we use Mud Slap. Now, this is a bit of a lucky strategy, and at first, I thought it wasn't going to work. I mean, we are at 1 HP. In reality, I used Mud Slap because I thought it would go for Rollout, but it just went for Stomp, and we got pretty lucky it missed all those times with Stomp. Still, a victory is a victory. First try for Raikou. What about good old Suicune? Is it gonna first try? Well, it's at level 18, so you can see all my Pokemon are roughly the same level. It three shots Clefairy and takes no damage, but then Miltank comes out, goes for Stomp, and you can just see how little Water Gun is doing. It's just basically the same thing versus Scyther. And I think here if I had a Berry equipped, which I think I ran out of them, or if I'd used Dig, things would have been fine. Unfortunately, due to really bad Clefairy luck, it took a lot more attempts in order to get a victory, since with Metronome, you're at the mercy of what Clefairy decides to do, and this one didn't look great. And I even forgot to teach Dig, which I really meant to do, but Rollout does have a chance to miss, and it actually misses twice alongside a critical hit. I'm going to definitely keep that victory because I forgot to save after using Dig, and so two of the legendary beasts have beaten Whitney, what about Entei? How did it figure it out with its weakness to roll out? Well, the Mudslap strategy never really ended up working, and the reason for it was that Entei was just too slow, and Miltank would knock it out too quickly. So we had to level up all the way to level 20 so that we outsped Miltank, and at that point, we didn't even need to use Mudslap. By using Headbutt against the Miltank, we were able to get a flinch as well as a miss, so it kind of looked really easy. But the key thing for at least Raikou and Entei was outspeeding. In Raikou's case, it had to rely on Mudslap because its attack is so bad. For Entei, it was much quicker just to use Headbutt. So Entei right now has, because of the optional battles, definitely fallen back. 
but I'm pretty sure there are some trainers coming up where Entei can really make up some ground, so it's still a close race here. And since I save before every gym leader, I can tell you right now that Entei saving in front of Morty has an hour and 43 minutes on the in-game timer, which is the official timer for all my solo runs because we need to experiment and try different strategies. And this is the first battle versus Morty. But since we did have to level up for Whitney and we have a really good attack stat, we can use Dig to outspeed and one-shot every single one of Morty's Pokemon. Until we don't. Gengar isn't actually an outspeed, it's a speed tie, and we actually get kind of lucky with how it all shakes down that we don't get put to sleep. That would have been bad, so it may have taken a couple attempts, but I think it's fair to say Entei had a pretty easy time versus Morty. One thing before I get to Raikou I should mention is that we are using gold and silver version, so we don't have to go into Burnt Tower and battle the rival there, which is why we go to Morty straight away. Raikou, as we save in front of Morty, you'll see has a pretty significant lead on Entei. 16 minutes in fact, however, will it be able to beat Morty as easily? Bite one-shots Ghastly, Haunter it does not one-shot and we're put to sleep. It then is able to use Nightshade a couple times, we stay asleep, and it knocks us out. So it's not going to be a first try victory, remember, Entei was able to one-shot. Now I haven't taught Dig to Raikou yet, I always hold off teaching moves until the last second, but we aren't really using Leer, so teaching Dig here would be perfectly fine. Now, I probably should have just gone for Bite against Ghastly, but I really wanted to know if Dig would do more against Haunter, and it does roughly the same, we just don't get put to sleep. This is a problem because although we'll outspeed Gengar, I have to rely on Mud Slap once again in order to avoid being put to sleep by Hypnosis. There is a Mint Berry on the way to Olivine, but I don't want to have to backtrack and get it. So Raikou, I wouldn't say got super lucky here. With a Mud Slap, Hypnosis has under 50% to actually put you to sleep. So the chances of two Hypnosis misses aren't crazy, but it would have been nicer if it would have been a two KO, one Dig and one Mud Slap. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So definitely a little bit lucky we got a first try victory there. Now, Suicune, as we save in front of Morty, is at 1 hour 40 minutes flat, but we actually battled the Kimono Sisters and thus have Surf right now, which we didn't for our other Pokemon. One big reason for this is I was super worried about not one-shotting Haunter, and as I suspected, I don't, so I needed to level up even more. Worse yet, Gengar actually outspeeds Suicune, despite the fact it's at the higher level, but we get pretty lucky and it goes for Mean Look, we're also kind of lucky, well, I guess not lucky, but grateful that it's going to be a two-shot with Dig, but that does give it one opportunity to hit us with Hypnosis, and thankfully, it misses. So, actually, first try victory for all three legendary beasts against Morty, all three getting a little lucky, but you know the old saying, you sometimes need to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good? Well, the legendary beasts are quite good. One other thing I do want to talk about, and this is as good a point as any, is to mention a big reason why I don't like doing solo runs in gold and silver. And that is the fact that trainers, unlike in red and blue where they just look in one direction, they randomly spin around, and especially when you're playing at increased speed, it's really hard to avoid them. So there's a lot of saving and resetting, which is a huge reason why I refuse to use real time for these runs, because it's just simply not fair especially to increase speed, it's just going to be random which beast wins based on the luck I get, and I'm not interested in that. Another thing I should mention is the reason I'm not using Crystal version is that Suicune, since it's the box legendary, got some different moves that made it way better, in my opinion, than the other two legendary beasts. So to keep things fair, I stuck to their original movesets from Gold and Silver. They all seem kind of similar to each other in a lot of ways, and I thought it would be the fairest comparison. But realistically, other than Burnt Tower, there aren't really any notable differences between Gold, Silver, and Crystal, at least until we beat the Elite Four. But that's a long ways away. For now, we're going to battle a bunch of trainers in the Lighthouse, and then we have to battle the Fighting-type Gym Leader, Shock. Once again, I think Entei is going to struggle here, not because of Primeape. We use Headbutt, which is our best move we can use right now, and it actually two-shots Primeape, but 
Unfortunately, Poliwrath is water type and two surfs are enough to knock out Entei. What I may have to do is rely on flinches, but that would be really, really annoying and I don't know how many I would need. I mean, it's not like it's using dynamic punch. I think I'd need two flinches at 30% each. That's not a very high probability. Of course, like three attempts later, as I'm trying to figure out what strategy I want to use and how exactly I want to do this, well, this happens. We get headbutt, surf. Okay, it looks bad, right? Flinch one, flinch two, yay. So it was either two flinches or a flinch and a crit, making it a little less consistent than I'd like. I usually have about a 25% rule. If something is winnable 25% of the time, I consider it good enough. This was more of a 10% chance of victory. But before you get all angry and say, well, J-Rose, that's going to mess up the tier list. The times are going to be off. This isn't consistent enough. Fair criticism. But if I were to do this run a second time, instead of going to Cyanwood City, I would head to the Lake of Rage and do the Team Rocket side quest. I would gain a ton of experience points. And then I'd likely only need one flinch, if any. So that's why I use in-game time. I'm not always sure what the damage calculations and what exactly I'm going to need to do, but definitely if I were to do this run again, I wouldn't do it in this order, at least for Entei. When it comes to Raiko, it's going to have a super effective move against Polyrath, but only base 40 power. Is that going to be enough? Well, first things first, we do have to deal with Primeape, and remember, we really don't have great moves, so we're going to have to rely on Headbutt with Raiko's way worse attack. For Polyrath, Thundershock is still a 3-hit KO, and Polyrath can put us to sleep. It gets a crit with Dynamic Punch, and then hits again. Dynamic Punch confuses every time, but only has a 50% chance of hitting. But right now, two of the Legendary Beasts were unable to first try Chuck, although a bit of bad luck when it comes to Raikou. In attempt number two, I have way less HP for Polyrath, but I'm hoping Dynamic Punch misses. It doesn't, and that means I'm going to need a third attempt versus Chuck. So this is definitely the toughest gym leader so far for all three legendary beasts. And there's definitely a question to be made here whether it wouldn't just be faster to do Lake of Rage first, but it might require a little bit of backtracking. Anyway, I'm hit by Dynamic Punch again and hit myself in confusion, and I'm just getting brutal Dynamic Punch luck. I don't have a Bitter Berry with me, unfortunately. You get that just east of Violet City, so I probably could use that going forward. Headbutt is doing more to Primeape than Thundershock, and we're at full HP, not that it really matters. We need Dynamic Punch to miss, we get one miss, we get a Paralysis, and we get a Hypnosis miss. So that's what it required for Raikou to win. Again, in retrospect, probably don't want to do Chuck so early, but as they say, hindsight is 2020. To keep things consistent, I also went to Cyanwood right away with Suicune, and hopefully it has an easier time, or this will be the first time all three beasts were unable to first try victory a gym leader. Also, just looking at all the in-game times, Raikou right now has a two-minute lead on Suicune for number one, and Surf two shots Primate. However, it is Polyrath that is scary, and Polyrath is going to be like a six-hit KO? I'm not even sure. And it's putting me to sleep. Thankfully, it's missing with Dynamic Punch, at least originally. But the one thing about Suicune is it has better defense. Unfortunately, because Chuck used Leer with Primate, it was a 2 KO, but had it not, it probably would have run out of dynamic punches before it could knock me out. In battle number two, Leer has a 25% chance of missing, and it does. So because of that, I think it's GG. It misses with Hypnosis, it uses Mind Reader, and then flinches, then misses with Hypnosis, and then misses with Hypnosis. That's way luckier than I was expecting, but that'll work. In the end of the day, Polyrath only hitting one or two dynamic punches isn't totally out of the question. I don't think it's that unlikely, and that's what I was expecting, but hey, I'll take that. Suicune definitely had the easiest time with Chuck, despite the fact that Raikou actually had the super effective move. Of course, if it had Thunderbolt, that would have been a different story. But right now, they're all kind of neck and neck, with Suicune in a slight lead, the biggest reason for this, by the way, is that when Suicune battles random trainers, it's able to use Surf and knock them out much quicker than Headbutt or Thundershock, which is what Raikou and Entei have to use. So that's going to be what Suicune gets the massive advantage for. 
But as the game progresses, will its mediocre offensive stats hold it back? Only one way to find out. So far, I think it's fair to say the beast that's been struggling the most is Entei, but this is one gym leader Entei is going to absolutely destroy. Its good attack with its speed means that Dig will one-shot Magnemite, and Rock Throw does nothing. Entei still has pretty decent defenses, and although it's going to be a 3 KO with only Ember, it doesn't learn Flamethrower until level 51, this is it. It's GG. First try victory versus Jasmine. Easy, easy. Raikou, however, with its electric type moves. Now, I was under no illusion that this would go well, but how badly it went kind of stunned me. I mean, Magnemite, we're still going to one shot. That's actually really good. But when it comes to Steelix, we have to use Dig and look at that. Now, Raikou has such bad moves. We still do have Mud Slap and it's not doing much damage, but eventually Iron Tail will stop hitting, you'd think but it only needs to hit once to do enough damage to knock me out. And although I battled Jasmine multiple times, I didn't come close to beating her with Raikou, so we'll probably have to come back and I might not battle Jasmine again until after I've defeated Price. Speaking of Price, because I wanted to make sure I one-shot the Magnemite, I actually battled Price first with Suicune. And at level 31, it's actually a two-shot with Headbutt against Seal. Dugong, I get a pretty lucky critical hit, which makes it a three-shot, Lucky only in that it sped up the battle and it didn't use rest. And then Pyloswine is ground type, so Suicune was actually able to knock it out fairly quickly. And now that I'm at level 32, I'm pretty confident Surf will one-shot or Dig. And since Dig was double super effective, I figured it would do more and it does one-shot the Magnemites and Surf one-shots the Steelix. So a first try victory, but Suicune did have to go a bit of a different path. As for Raikou, it still needs to defeat Price. And Thundershock doesn't quite one-shot Seal. That's unfortunate, but it's Thundershock. Pyloswine comes out next, and Headbutt's not doing much, but even though Pyloswine is ground-type, it doesn't really have a ground move, although it crits with Blizzard, which is quite bad. Then I crit and get a flinch, so I kind of made up for it. Dugong is going to be obnoxious, but it's actually surprisingly a 2 KO with Thundershock, and so Price gave me a bit of a scare, but I was able to first try victory him. And now I have to go back to Jasmine and hope that I've leveled up enough to beat her with Raikou right now. Again, this would be an instance where Hidden Power would help immensely, like Hidden Power Water or Fire or something. Big reason we don't use it. Well, we know that she's going to lead with Magnemite, and we already know we're going to one-shot with Dig because we did way before. We aren't going to be level 33 before Steelix, so hopefully level 32 is good enough. Now, moment of truth, I'm just going to go for Mud Slap, and we get an Iron Tail miss, a second Iron Tail miss, and then Screech, which is really, really bad because with a critical hit, Iron Tail nearly knocks me out. I'm going to go for Dig. It has a Hyper Potion, and now we just have to hope Iron Tail basically misses every single time. We also have to hope we don't run out of Power Points for Dig, and thankfully, Iron Tail does its job. Dig doesn't run out of Power Points. I don't know how lucky that was, or whether that was above average, below average, not really sure. At the end of the day, we did get a first try victory post price, and so two of the legendary beasts are ready to move on to the very tedious and very easy Team Rocket section. We still haven't shown Entei's battle versus price, however, so I should do that. Entei does have a weakness to water, but thankfully it's so strong in its attack I'll critical hit one shot, and by the way, they don't have water attacks, so we don't really even need to worry about that. You'll see that Entei is still higher level than the other two legendary beasts. This is definitely as a result of Entei having a harder time versus the majority of gym leaders, but we can see there its strong attack with Headbutt made quick work of price despite the type, well, theoretically should have a type advantage, but because of Gen 2, it has a type disadvantage since there were two water Pokemon. Regardless, easy victory, and now it gets to move on to the Team Rocket section. So far, the Legendary Beasts have pretty much blown through the early game. The only gym leader that really put up much of a fight was Chuck. No pun intended there. But I do anticipate that's about to come to a very abrupt end. Claire is going to be very tough especially on Entei since Kindra, her ace, knows Surf, and that's gonna be not fun. 
First though, let's check out Raikou because that's the Pokemon I'm most curious about how it's going to do versus Claire. It doesn't have an advantage of any kind, but it also doesn't have any kind of severe disadvantage. Let's see how it all shook down. As Raikou saves in front of Claire, it's at 3 hours 54 in-game minutes. Not a bad time, but longer than the entirety of Generation 1. Anyway, you'll notice that I'm no longer using Headbutt, but I'm using Return instead. Return does a lot more damage, I'm at max friendship at this point, but it can't flinch. But since Dragonair likes to paralyze me, I'd rather deal extra damage. Unfortunately, by the time I end up getting to Kingdra, while well, I was able to knock out all the Dragonair, I had no HP left and I just lost. Meaning I'm probably going to need to level up a little bit more, and something that'll help me do that in a hurry are the rare candies. There are a bunch of rare candies around Johto, and this is the perfect point to fly around and collect all of them. I might not have to use them before Claire, but I'll probably definitely have to use them before the Elite Four, so it's a good time to do it. Well, I used the rares just to see how the battle would go versus Claire, and return almost one-shots, which is great. Unfortunately, we are getting paralyzed. I could theoretically use a Paralysis Cure Berry, but hold on now. I have the normal boosting item equipped, and it can be a 1 KO with Return, although it doesn't one-shot the third Dragonair. What does happen, however, is Kingdra uses Hyper Beam, and thus, even though I can't move due to Paralysis, thankfully I paralyzed the Kingdra, although I would have tanked another Hyper Beam anyway, and I'm able to two-shot. So I'm going to not reset, I'm going to keep the rare candy battle, that was just to get information, but when you win like that, you keep the win, and so Raikou is done the first 8 gyms, it did pretty okay. Suicune is the beast I think will do best versus Claire, because Suicune can utilize Icy Wind, which is acquired by beating Price. You'll notice Suicune still has a slight lead over Raikou at 3 hours 51 minutes. 3 minute lead though is nothing. Anyway, I don't know if Icy Wind will one-shot Dragonair. It doesn't. Of course, we haven't used Rare Candies yet, so that's something to keep in mind. We do get paralyzed, and the second Dragonair does have Thunderbolt, which is pretty annoying. We probably won't win first try. We don't obviously have enough health for two or three Hyper Beams, because we're not going to one-shot with Icy Wind. I'm actually pleasantly surprised it was able to tank one Hyper Beam at very low HP, but like I said, it's going to take several Icy Winds to win, and we needed to do more damage. If we one-shot those Dragonair, this is going to be a completely joke battle. But what if I told you we didn't even need to one-shot to win, because we still have Headbutt and we can get a flinch. So that's one turn we're not paralyzed, and that means we can try this all over again. We do get paralyzed here, but I can use the Paralysis Cure Berry. And now that's two turns we're not paralyzed. The third Dragonair doesn't even bother, and so we're at 145 HP. We still have Headbutt to flinch, and it's a four shot. Well, unfortunately, there's a Hyper Potion, but it will be a four shot. Kingdra gets so desperate, it goes for a smoke screen. And as predicted, albeit with a slightly different strategy than I anticipated, Suicune completely obliterates Claire. Entei, however, I have a feeling it will be the reverse, and it will get obliterated by Claire. I hope to be wrong. As Entei saves before Claire, it's at 4 hours 13 minutes, so it is way, way behind. But then something amazing happened. Look how much we do with Headbutt. I was going to go for the flinch, because I didn't think possibly Return could one-shot. But based on the damage from Headbutt, it's entirely possible that it does. And perhaps I was completely wrong. Perhaps with Return, Ante will actually obliterate Claire. Well, let's see how that goes. So she leads with Dragonair. I misclick and go for Headbutt, but that's okay. I have the Paralysis Cure Berry. It's fine. Now I have Return. So I go for Return. It does half and that's excellent. Because aside from wasting a Paralysis Cure Berry, we were able to one-shot the Dragonairs with Return, and Entei's amazing base attack finally is coming in handy. And somewhat shockingly, it, although at a very high level, may have had the easiest battle versus Claire yet. Pretty good stuff. However, to use a sports analogy, all this was just regular season. It was important. It matters in the standings. 
But at the end of the day, the playoffs make all the difference. And the playoffs are the Elite Four. If we can't beat the Elite Four, and we're not going to save between Elite Four members, this is going to really take away the luck component. If we're going to win, we have to win five extremely difficult fights back to back to back to back to back. And I don't know which beast is going to be able to do it first. Is it going to be Entei, Raiko, Suicune? Well, let's talk about their journeys because because I have a feeling they're all going to struggle with the Elite Four in some places. Let's start with Suicune, who I again predict, because of Lance, may have the easiest time. It still hasn't used rare candies yet, and so Surf is not going to one-shot. But the fact it has access to Surf is a huge advantage. And as you can see, it's just shredding through Will's team. Unfortunately, Slowbro is where things are going to get a little bit more annoying, but with its great defenses, it's not like Slowbro can do much damage to it. And so, although the battle took a little while, Suicune was easily able to get through Will's team. The next Elite Four member is Koga, and Koga might be a little difficult for Suicune because Koga likes to use annoying strategies like Double Team and Toxic, and since Suicune's offensive stats aren't so great, that could be a problem, but it does one-shot Ariados. It doesn't one-shot Venomoth, it's confused, but it's able to knock it out with Headbutt. Fortress loves to use Explosion, it goes for Spikes, which doesn't matter, and we knock it out with Headbutt, which is pretty funny, because that would really hurt. Then we snap out of Confusion, Muck goes for Minimize, it then misses with Toxic, which is really lucky. In modern Pokemon, that wouldn't happen. We go for Icy Wind versus Crobat, and even after Double Team, we hit with Icy Wind, which does have a chance to miss, but it was a 2 a KO. Now, the song goes, we don't talk about Bruno, but unfortunately, I do have to talk about Bruno. He only has one Rock Pokemon, though. So it's not like in Red and Blue, where Suicune is just going to roll through this team. In fact, what we're going to do is avoid Dig by us using Dig. Hidden on top is going to counter with Detect, but we make it through without taking any damage. All these fighting Pokemon, or at least the Hitmons, have pretty good special defense, so they're all going to be two shots, which is why I switched to Headbutt for Hitmon Lee. Machamp has way better defense than special defense, but it's still going to be a 2 KO with Surf. And then finally, the last Pokemon is Onix, which we're going to get through quickly. So Suicune has made it all the way to Karen on its very first attempt. That's pretty good. But like Koga, Karen loves to use, especially with Umbreon, really, really irritating moves. And if we can't knock it out quickly, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So now is the moment to use the rare candies. 51 gives us Mist, which is a truly useless move. I don't know why Entei gets Flamethrower and Suicune gets Mist, but hey, we already have Surf, things are good. And so now we have to see if we can beat Karen, because if we can, then we may first try victory the Elite Four, contrary to what I said earlier. So I'm gonna go for Headbutt and get a Clutch Flinch, and then Surf, I actually should've just gone for Surf, it would've been a two-shot. That's unfortunate, because now I'm confused, but after hitting myself in confusion, I'm able to knock out Umbreon without any accuracy drops at only minus 30 HP. Vileplume comes out next, Icy Wind's gonna be a two-shot, and we get a really clutch Stun Spore miss. Next comes out Gengar, I thought it was gonna go for Curse, Dig doesn't one-shot, and Lick doesn't paralyze. We're getting some really good luck here. Murkrow comes out next, Icy Wind misses, Faint Attack, Icy Wind then one-shots, and Houndoom. Guys, I think this is GG. I think Suicune may have first try victory the Elite Four, because with Icy Wind, even though it's not Aurora Beam, it's not Ice Beam, and for those of you asking, no, there is no TM for Ice Beam in Gold, Silver, Crystal. In Crystal, after you beat the Elite Four, you are able to get a move tutor move, but we're playing gold and silver and we haven't beat the Elite Four yet. That's about to come, at least for Suicune, as we probably are going to sweep through Lance's team fairly quickly. But first comes Gyarados. We use Headbutt, it goes for Hyper Beam. We're actually out of Headbutts, but that's okay. Two Icy Winds, knock it out. And now one Icy Wind, ah, ah, ah. Remember the count? Two! Two icy winds! Ha ha ha! Three! Three icy winds! And now the last two Pokemon are weak to surf. And Suicune has definitely made a statement. It has gone through Johto fairly easily. 
But is it gonna get through Kanto in red easily? Is it gonna win? Well, before we answer that question, we gotta see how the other two legendary beasts do. And as the Hall of Fame screen rolls, you'll see that Suicune made it in at 454. And considering this is only my second fast solo run in gold silver, I'm pretty happy with that. As we save in front of the Elite Four, Raikou enters nine minutes behind Suicune. So if it's gonna catch up, it's gonna need to beat the Elite Four even quicker. Not necessarily first try because we're using in-game time, but it's gonna have to do the battles faster. And with its stats, it might be able to, but with its mediocre moves, not so sure. Now, I didn't make as big a deal of this as I should, but Raikou does have access to Spark, which is at least base 65 power as opposed to the terrible base 40 Thundershock. It's able to one-shot Zatu. I then go for Return and one-shot Jinx. Return does half to Executor, but unfortunately it goes for Reflect. That's annoying. Thankfully, it doesn't do very much damage to us, and at this point, we're just going to use Spark and knock out Zatu, and then Slowbro, and we're going to make it all the way, all the way. We're going to make it to Koga. Now, like with Suicune, we don't have super great attacks for Koga. Hopefully, he doesn't troll us too bad. We do one-shot Ariados, and we don't one-shot Fortress. So, so far, exactly like Suicune. Venomoth comes out next, and we get again a Paralysis. It goes for Toxic. But if we can knock out Muck quickly, and it's going to be a three-shot, after Minimize, that's kind of scary. We do Paralyze it. Sludge Bomb, all right, we don't miss. Crobat, we should be able to one-shot. And I think I'm going to get rid of Headbutt. We no longer need it. Maybe Reflect could come in handy. Not right now. Right now, we need to quickly knock out Crobat, and due to our speed and our ability to use an electric move, this could have been worse, but first try victory, hooray. Now, we're going to need a move to deal with Onyx, and so I'm actually going to get rid of Reflect. We don't need it as badly as we need Iron Tail, a move you don't use often, but will come in handy here. So, yeah. Okay. Hit him on top, I'm gonna go for return because I'm running out of spark and a crit works. Next, I'm gonna go for Iron Tail, it misses and Sandstorm is annoying and Earthquake is more annoying. Iron Tail doesn't one shot either, which is super annoying, but it could potentially be a range. Unfortunately, that's something we're gonna have to find out in our next run because we have lost to Bruno. After quickly beating the first two members again, we go and battle Bruno. Return doesn't one-shot, but remember what we did with Suicune, we can do the exact same thing, avoiding damage from Dig, which would be a bit of a bigger deal. And would you look at that, Iron Tail is a range, and thus we can knock out Onyx in one hit. Also notice, Return does one-shot both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. It doesn't one-shot Machamp, but that's okay. Return plus Spark does a good job. But the victory may be short-lived. Both Karen and Lance could be really tricky. I'm not exactly sure what Raikou is going to do. We don't have Surf for Houndoom. We don't have Icy Wind, but one thing at a time. So first things first, we got to deal with Umbreon. It's going to be a three shot and it does use Sand Attack. And you can see Return and Spark are roughly doing the same damage, which really sucks. Vileplume comes out. I'm confused. I have less accuracy, and thankfully I'm not paralyzed, although I'm not sure how that's missed twice. Now thrice! Wow, that is crazy good. Four times! Four times a miss! Holy mackerel, that's insane! Dig doesn't one-shot Gengar, however, so I am hit with Curse. That's gonna suck because I want to use Dig against Houndoom, and of course I miss, and because of Curse, now we have to rely on return, which doesn't one-shot. And so, run number two ends with some really good luck and then some really bad luck versus Karen. Unfortunately, run number two doesn't actually go all that much better. It's still going to be a three-shot versus Umbreon unless we get a crit. So things are looking good, right? Well, remember that crazy luck we got with Stun Spore? I didn't get it this time and I forgot to equip the Paralysis Cure Berry. So now, all her Pokemon are going to go first. And while that doesn't matter initially, once we miss with Dig a couple times and then it uses Curse, I know that things are done. And then unfortunately, all Houndoom had to do was go for Flamethrower, get a crit, and that was the battle again. 
Some pretty bad luck, but when you're not one-shotting things, that's bound to happen versus Karen. Thankfully, on attempt number three, we finally do break through. Although I did forget to give an ether, which is kind of annoying. We do get our actually drop, but we equip a paralysis cure berry this time. And that was what we really needed because although we don't one shot the Gengar, it doesn't go for curse. So we're basically at full HP for Houndoom. We finally get to land dig and it actually doesn't one shot anyway. So could have just used return. We then start to get some bad luck with misses and a heal, but we're able to knock out Houndoom. We just have to land one spark. Of course, we miss it. But luckily for us, Murkrow's defenses are so bad that even Return was able to knock it out. But does that mean it's a free victory against Lance? I think not. The Dragonites are going to be tough. We're going to one-shot the Gyarados easily, but I don't really know how many hits it's going to take to knock out the three Dragonite. They're going to paralyze us. This could go pretty badly. We're at level 55, and of course we outspeed and one-shot Gyarados. Next comes out Dragonite number one, and it is going to be a two-shot. We Paralysis Cure Berry the Thunder Wave, but we won't be able to do that twice. So after this Dragonite comes out, we Paralyze, and then it Paralyzes. That's three down, but three to go. Next comes out Outrage Dragonite, and there's the problem. It's going to be a three-shot. It doesn't hit itself in Confusion, and twice we can't attack due to Paralysis. Of course, because of how much we do, Lance is able to heal, perfect healing range, and all that happiness felt by finally beating Karen has evaporated since Lance looks to be obnoxious. We're probably going to need to get a 25% Thunder Wave miss, and we're going to have to be a little smarter about which moves we use against the Dragonite. However, if we are, we probably will one-shot both Aerodactyl and Charizard, assuming we're not paralyzed and outspeed them. What does make me happy, though, is that we get back to Lance in our next attempt. If we keep getting to Lance, that means the strategies we're using are consistent, which makes me really happy. We're also consistently knocking out the Gyarados in one hit, of course. There was the 25% Thunder Wave, and of course we get a horrible range, and thus we have to use a Paralysis Cure Berry anyway, which is the most obnoxious thing. Then we get a second 25% chance miss, and I know I have to clutch it out here. Not that I have much of a choice. At this point, it's kind of up to the RNG deities. And they give me a paralysis. They also make Dragonite use Hyper Beam, which means that although it's gonna heal, it has to re- Oh, it doesn't have to recharge? Okay, well, that sucks. But we're not paralyzed. And as I suspected, we are able to knock out both Charizard and Aerodactyl, so RNG was in my favor. After some bad luck and a little bit of troubleshooting, we were consistently able to make it to Lance, so it seems. And Raikou, you know what? Considering that it's alone and is using Spark, did pretty well. And as it enters the Hall of Fame, it has a five hour, eight minute time. Not nearly as good as Suicune, but Actually, I can't see how it's going to make up that time because it's not like it's going to get Thunderbolt or anything in Kanto. Eh, we'll see. But before we talk about Kanto, we have one more legendary beast left. The one I was most afraid of versus the Elite Four, Entei. Because Entei is resisted by Lance, Karen's Houndoom. Entei's going to have a bit of a tough time and it's also kind of slow. Hopefully, we figure out some strategies, because I have a feeling this ain't gonna go super well. As we save before our first attempt, we're at 4 hours 46 minutes, so Entei is still in last, but it's actually caught up significantly to Raikou, unsurprisingly since Spark isn't very good. Anyway, we're gonna use Return versus Zatu, and we one-shot. Our attack is really being great here. Return is even gonna two-shot Slowbro with its super high defenses, and Headbutt even one-shots Jinx. In fact, Will stands absolutely no chance versus Entei, which seems pretty consistent and pretty good, so yay. Koga also probably will be pretty easy. Unfortunately, we don't have Flamethrower yet, but Return does one-shot Ariados. Fortress Ember probably will still one-shot that. And now Muck, I'm gonna go for Return. It's barely, barely a two-shot, so close to being a one-shot. And then return almost one-shots Crobat. Unfortunately, because it's the ace, Koga can heal, but return knocks it out. And there we go. Finally, Flamethrower 
the only legendary beast to learn their really good elemental move at all. Suicune gets it via HM, and Raikou never gets it. Weird stuff. But I made a mistake versus Bruno, which is kind of unfortunate. And the mistake was not teaching Iron Tail. But here's the thing you should know. Entei was the first time I did runs. And it's with Entei that I figured out a lot of strategies that helped with all three of the legendary beasts. Dig doesn't work versus Onyx because when you use Dig, it can hit you with Earthquake Underground. I didn't really think of that. I knew that, but I didn't really consider how that would go down. And so while Entei definitely has been the worst Pokemon, part of why it struggled in certain places is that Entei was the one I tested out certain strategies on, and then Raikou and Suicune got to use those strategies, such as Iron Tail. After one more failed attempt without using Iron Tail, watch what happens when I do. So this is again when I figured out the strategy of using Dig to make sure that Hitmontop can't hit me. All these things Entei figured out, and it just kind of was luck of the draw that it went first. Of course, it misses Iron Tail twice, which is really annoying, but there's still a chance it could win. Flamethrower on Machamp, of course it has Rock Slide. Max Potion doesn't really matter since we do over half. If we get good luck, we will win here. We go for Flamethrower, High Jump Kick. It doesn't look like we're getting the luck we need. I'm gonna go for Return. This is when I realize Return's gonna deal more damage. And with, oh. I thought we were about to win that with two HP to go. Like the first loss versus Bruno, this is an excellent example of me just not having the right strategies and not really thinking about this run properly. It just takes time, trial and error for me to kind of figure out what I want to do here. But once I do, things start to get really consistent. Bruno's Hitmontop, we're going to do the exact same thing as we've done the last two times. We've solved that Pokemon for good. Now, against Onix, we need the first turn hit. We get it, which is really nice. Against Machamp, I'm going to see if Return does more of a Flamethrower, and it does, actually. So we're just going to go for Return. I think this is when I figure out why am I not just going for Return, and I was really annoyed when I saw that Hitmonlee fainted in one hit, Add did Hitmonchan. I mean, I figured Flamethrower, same type attack. Good, right? Wrong. Better special defense, my better attack. It was just a really, really dumb idea. But hey, we figured it out in the end, and we've made it to Carrot. But unfortunately, like with Raikou, we may not one-shot our Pokemon, so this could be pretty annoying. Return's gonna two-shot, but of course, our accuracy is lowered. We hit level 52. Gengar, we have to go for Dig. Curse misses, but our attack is way better. So we actually are gonna one-shot it with Dig. Return then one-shots Murkrow. Oh, we're probably gonna make it to Lance here. We go for Dig against Houndoom. It's gonna one-shot. Return may have as well. And then Vileplume. Hey, that was quick. Okay, so I don't think Karen is actually going to be a problem, but Lance leads with Gyarados, which is a water type. And then we have Pink Bow. That will deal a little bit more damage. I can use the rare candies here, by the way, get up to level 54. And maybe we want the Paralysis Cure Berry, but I want to see how much damage I do with the Pink Bow, because if we knock him out in one hit, I doubt we do, that would be nice. So, actually, we almost knock out Gyarados in one hit, which is really cool. Aerodactyl then comes out next, and we have Iron Tail. Unfortunately, we miss, but then Aerodactyl misses with Rock Slide. Great! It only had a 10% chance to miss. I had a 30% chance to miss. Now, we're going to go for Return, and it's going to be a two-shot. We are paralyzed here. It uses Hyper Beam, but so far, so good. Number two goes for Twister, but unfortunately, I get paralyzed, and then I get crit. And then it goes for Hyper Beam. We actually do fairly okay. I mean, I know I've lost. Charizard goes for Hyper Beam, and shockingly, I tank that. So I've made it to the final Dragonite. But yeah, Outrage. You know what? Entei, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with how this went. This may not be as far off as I thought it would be. Once again, we make it right back to Lance on our very next attempt. The strategies are working, which is amazing. Return, return, buy Gyarados. Please hit. 70% chance, we get it, buy Aerodactyl. Next, we have Dragonite, and we need a miss. We have a Paralysis Cure Berry, and it's still a two-shot. Please miss, please miss, it doesn't. And that's really unfortunate, because now Charizard gets to hit us with Hyper Beam. Thankfully, it has to recharge, but of course, I'm paralyzed, 
and at 87 HP, Hyper Beam, we get paralyzed. And that's obnoxious because with all the bad luck we got, if we just didn't get paralyzed that last time, the run would be over. So this goes to show you Entei was actually quite good versus Lance. It would have been a second try victory if not for some truly abhorrent luck. So it shouldn't surprise you that on the third battle versus Lance, we get the luck we need. Gyarados goes down in two hits as always. We get the 70% Iron Tail hit. Then we get some pretty interesting stuff happening here. We get paralyzed by the first Dragonite. That's okay, we still have our Paralysis Cure Berry. The second Dragonite, however, goes for Hyper Beam. And as soon as it did that, the game was over. Charizard now, we outspeed it. It went for Wing Attack. So we have 143 HP. Return, it's gonna be a two a KO, but Dragonite doesn't even bother attacking us. At level 55, Entei was able to make it by Lance. And that's pretty cool. I actually thought Entei was gonna struggle mightily here. And yet, it really proved me wrong. It's really good base attack combined with return did way better than I could have ever hoped. And at 505, it actually moves into second place past Raikou. So that's really impressive for Entei. Good stuff here. Now, I've shown the Kanto gyms in previous videos, but there's really no purpose. They're not very difficult and shouldn't even really be considered major battles. I don't believe I've lost to one a single time in any of these runs, even using pre-evolved Pokemon. So we're gonna skip ahead to the final gym, Blue, who should still be fairly easy, but at least has a varied team and can be challenging. Sticking with Entei, it saved in front of Blue at six hours, 17 minutes. And as we battle Blue, you'll notice I have some pretty different moves, including Sunny Day and Solar Beam, which is how I easily got past Brock, in case you were wondering how that worked. Unfortunately, Rhydon went for Sandstorm turn one, but eventually it was able to get up Sunny Day and use Solar Beam and knock it out. Against Gyarados, using Return is better than Solar Beam. It goes for Rain Dance, but that's okay. Now out comes Alakazam, but we outspeed and go for Return. And then comes out Arcanine. Extreme Speed does like nothing, and we can go for Return. Full Restore doesn't really matter. Return, two hit KOs, and then the rain dissipates, and we can knock out Executor with Flamethrower. We're at level 62, and we're about to battle red, but first, let's talk about the other two legendary beasts and their time versus blue. You can see that Raikou's deficit has grown to eight minutes, which makes a degree of sense considering it doesn't have great physical attack and its best special attacking move is only 65 base power still more than strong enough to knock out Pidgeot. Next comes out the Rhydon, and you'll see that it does get the move Crunch, which is a special attacking move, and Sandstorm didn't do that much to it. We can use Crunch to knock out Alakazam in one hit. Sandstorm is counteracting our leftovers. Actually, it's more than counteracting. It actually does 1 8th versus 1 16th, which it does nowadays. It's not going to be too big a deal. At level 62, there's not much that Blue's Pokemon can really do, although that Flamethrower was pretty good. We're at level 63 now, in fact, but Gyarados is the last Pokemon, and Raikou had a pretty easy job. It moves on to the final battle. As we save in front of Blue, Suicune's at 603. It's got a 20-minute lead on Raikou, and a significant lead on Entei as well. It's looking pretty unstoppable. But, funny enough, Unlike the other two, it's got the exact same moveset it had versus the Elite Four. Dig, Icy Wind. I do have Headbutt just in case I need a flinch and I could have used one here. It's not that much weaker, but yeah. Wow, actually, wow. Are we gonna lose versus Gyarados? Holy mackerel. Holy moly. Suicune. Well, that's interesting. Suicune lost. You know, that's definitely... Okay, well, I have me Never Melt Ice. I could give it leftovers. That definitely contributed, but man, I actually didn't see that coming. So Suicune's not great moveset right here has definitely hurt it a little bit, and that headbutt was a really poor idea versus Pidgeot. Thankfully, we got the flinch there. Now Sunny Day is up, and that's bad because Surf will do less damage. Thankfully, we shouldn't need it for a little while as blue stalls a little bit using full restores. 
We knock out Executor, Alakazam comes out next. We don't have Crunch here, so we gotta go for Headbutt. But with Leftover's recovery, we have way more for Gyarados than we did before. And I'm gonna try to get the flinch. It goes for Twister. Icy Wind does just about as much. And once we go for Headbutt and get Leftover's recovery, turns out this battle probably could have been a first try victory had I had Leftover's from the start. So a bit my fault, but also goes to show you that Suicune definitely is vulnerable especially if it takes a long time to defeat red and when i say a long time to defeat red and at this level it may be a situation where it's not even a matter of resetting enough times in some of these cases the battles are virtually impossible to win unless you level up or adjust your strategy get new tms etc i'm gonna go with what i have i haven't really gone too out of my way and i have a feeling all three legendary beasts are going to be able to win but is that belief misplaced we're going to start off with the first one I did, Entei, it's only fair. The one we started this video off with, and it impressed us versus the Elite Four, at least relative to expectations. But none of that matters. If it's going to win this race, it needs to have a clean battle versus Red, and there's a few Pokemon that are going to give it some trouble. Is it going to be able to overcome them? Only one way to find out. Red leads off with his level 81 Pikachu. We do outspeed and one-shot with Return. Next comes out Espeon, which outspeeds us, and it lowers our special defense. Even with leftovers, that's not going to be enough. So that 10% lowering of special defense just can't happen. I'm going to use the rare candies here because, I mean, that was definitely a pretty quick loss. And when you get a quick loss like that, it scares you a little bit. All right, so return, one shots Pikachu. Good. Espeon comes out, now we outspeed it, and Psychic does way less. So we're going to make it to Blastoise with 179, and I have an idea here. I immediately go for Sunny Day, and it goes for Surf. Sunny Day reduces the amount of damage Surf does, and it also allows Solar Beam to be a one-turn attack. Unfortunately, it only does half, and we make it to Snorlax with only 35 HP. Return does a lot, albeit with a critical hit. But remember how I said Entei's going to need a clean battle? Well, with this strategy... That's not going to happen. And so what I had to do was kind of think as I battled. That's not a one shot, but that means I need to use the rare candies. Rather than just pause the game and think, it's easier for me to battle, test things out. And eventually I slowly start to figure out changes I could make in order to get things to be a little bit more consistent. And unfortunately for Entei, because of the fact that it is weak to Blastoise, and doesn't have an especially fun time even versus Espeon, it took me a long, long time to think of any kind of effective strategy. After dozens of battles, only a handful making it to Charizard, and none of them getting passed, I realized that this wasn't going to work. I needed to leave and try to determine something else, because the TMs I had, the items I had, this wasn't going to work. And after running around the overworld, I finally figured out a strategy I thought would help. Level up a little bit more using a rare candy from where you get Ho-Oh. And with that, it changed things. How? Well, it changed things in a couple ways. It made certain damages a little bit less. And by making them a little bit less, it gave me just a little bit more HP to work with. And it also started doing just a little bit more. And with a little bit more, it took things from Snorlax being a 4-hit KO to Snorlax being a 3-hit KO, with it always going for Amnesia turn 1. And so I have way more HP for Charizard, which is now unable to knock me out. And once I make it to Venusaur, all I have to do is use Flamethrower, and we don't win right away. It's going to go for Solar Beam, since its only offensive moves are Solar Beam and Giga Drain. And so, it was just a matter of leveling up a little bit more. GG. But unfortunately, not GG. Because unlike when you get to the Hall of Fame, the game doesn't just give you your in-game time. And I didn't realize this, so I'm sitting there talking to chat, dawdling, and when I go to save, I realize that I've wasted a whole bunch of time. I have no idea what my final time was versus Red. And although this was a first try victory leveled up, I had no idea whether this was consistent. And you know what the good thing is? Turns out it was. 
I did lose one more time, so it's not like I'm gonna win every single time. There's still a couple things that need to go my way. And I have a bit of a different strategy here. Although this one's really cheeky by going for Sunny Day and hoping for a Charm Miss. That, realistically, was me just trying to be a little too cute. But it did work out here pretty well because since the Sunny Day is already set up, that means Blastoise has to go for Rain Dance. I mean, it's not going to use Surf more than one time, meaning we have over 200 HP for Snorlax. Reflect phase at the perfect time. I try to get the burn. It always goes for Amnesia turn one. It doesn't get the paralysis. These are all things that kind of need to go right, but the range of it being a three hit versus four KO was probably the biggest component that allowed me to have victory. And yeah, pretty much the same thing happens. We can just speed through. And now when we save, you can see, oops, I go to options. 701 is our final time for Entei at level 67. Can Raiko and Suicune beat that? Let's see. If Raiko can do this without having to figure out a new strategy or leveling up, at 635, it's going to win by a country mile. The question is, will it be able to beat Red so quickly? And there's only one way to find out. So we're going to use Return on Pikachu, and it goes for Charm. That's not good, because I was hoping that would one-shot. And it doesn't. Crunch also doesn't come close to one-shotting. You know, watching this battle, I don't mean to spoil it. It's just so interesting how far this is going to be from the strategy I use. You're not ready. Because, holy mackerel, was Raikou an interesting Pokemon to use. Right now, however, I am completely missing what makes Raikou so good versus Red. I'm trying to use all the same moves we used before. Return, Iron Tail. I'm going to try in vain for like this for about 20-30 minutes and I'm going to make it absolutely nowhere. But hey, you got a critical hit here. That's really good. Unfortunately, Return isn't even a two-shot versus Espeon. But don't worry, Crunch will make up the difference. But now we have to face Snorlax. And this is where things went wrong. Because my defense is bad. My attack is bad. There was just no way. There was no way. Snorlax was just too good. But thankfully... I had an idea. Curse. With Entei, it wouldn't have worked to use Curse because Blastoise would have just one-shot it or two-shot it with Surf. So that wasn't a viable strategy. We needed our speed. But Raikou doesn't actually have anything that is strong against it. It's resisted by a couple things, at least some of its moves are, but it, there's no ground moves. So in theory, we could set up a bunch of Curses versus something like Pikachu, and then we could just deal a whole bunch of damage versus Snorlax. Of course, being paralyzed and whatnot is probably not the best thing, but I just wanted to see how much damage I would do after, I don't know, like 10 curses. Of course, Espeon decides to be a complete jerk and go for Reflect, which is super mega ultra annoying. But even with Reflect, we're doing like a third. And hey, even with bad luck, although I'll go for another curse here, and that's what I was hoping, Reflect. Now we have leftovers, and it's going to go for Snore with all the curses. We actually do more in terms of healing than Snore does in terms of damage. And then rest again. I'm going to speed this part up, because eventually we do in fact win. And now out comes Venusaur, which we one-shot. And now out comes Blastoise, goes for Rain Dance. We don't one-shot, but... Oh, uh, we got paralyzed. Well, okay. Not so bad. But unfortunately, while the strategy has a lot of promise, it wasn't working. We simply were losing too much HP to make it past Blastoise and to Charizard. So I did tons of these runs. I got pretty far. I tried my very best. I tried all different combinations of moves. And yet, I still wasn't able to make it to the final Pokemon, let alone defeat it. I needed to slightly modify the strategy. And let me just say, it's super fascinating that Raikou, a Pokemon with terrible physical attack, is the one we're using Curse with. It's, I, I never thought that would be a strat I'd use with Raikou. I thought maybe Entei, but no, it makes sense with Raikou because, as I said, no super effective moves against it. Anyway, I did have to end up going out and getting some items to make this a little easier for Raikou. And one of the things I needed to get was the TM for rest. We were just losing way too much HP. 
and we were also experiencing issues with getting paralyzed. And so with Protect instead of Detect, which has more power points, and Rest to rest away the paralysis, the battle went a heck of a lot easier. By the time we get to Snorlax, we just keep going for Curse, and like last time, it's just going to do no damage to us. We wait till the Reflect wears out, and then we start going for Protect. We want to gain as much HP back as possible. We actually knock out Snorlax in one hit. We've actually used all six Curses for the very first time. And turns out that, by the way, this totally would have worked. Uh, we didn't need it to work. We got some pretty decent luck. But I promise you, if we didn't get decent luck, this strategy would have been amazing. But <laughs> sometimes the, uh, the odds just really work out for you. But hey, a win's a win. Curse, return, did a good job. And as we save, Raikou at 6 minutes, 56 seconds, has a slight lead on Entei. But don't count Suicune out. It's made up significant time in the Kanto section due to its ability to use Surf. It's at 616, saving in front of Red. If it can do this in one attempt without having to leave, it's going to win big. But even though Suicune was my third run, there was always something about this fight I couldn't anticipate, some item I would need, and I know what you're saying, oh, just get all the items, but that wastes time. I want to be able to do it as quick as possible. Not having to go out of my way and collect all this stuff that you probably don't need, it just makes sense. But sometimes you need one of them. And maybe Suicune will need something. Let's see. Well, right off the bat, there's a bit of an issue with Pikachu, and it actually outspeeds and goes for Charm, which is terrible, and Surf doesn't one-shot. So, yeah, that's not good. None of those things are good. We need to one-shot Pikachu. We need to preferably outspeed Pikachu. Oh, and it's a range. Beautiful. Now, out gonna come Venusaur, and Icy Wind does nothing. Ice Beam would help, but Icy Wind does nothing. So I battled a few more times, but the combination of Pikachu and Venusaur proved too much for me. So I left, bought a TM, and came back. Again, could have gotten this before, didn't think I needed it. What TM did I get? I got the TM for Rain Dance, because if I use Rain Dance, then Solar Beam not only becomes a two-turn attack, well, let me show you the strat. I go for Icy Wind, it goes for Sunny Day. I then go for Rain Dance, it goes for Solar Beam, anticipating it to be a one-turn attack, but it's not, because I used Rain Dance. And now, if it were to hit me, it would do less damage, but I don't let it hit me because, I don't know, I have Protect. What else am I going to use here? Unfortunately, I didn't anticipate that it has Giga Drain. I thought it only had Solar Beam because I only ever remember it using Solar Beam as a kid. Turns out, no, if you put up Rain, it's going to use Giga Drain, and I don't have a defense for that. I got nothing. Like, nothing at all. This strategy was totally contingent on the fact... Oh, I forgot to teach Rain Dance. But it was totally contingent on the fact that it only had Solar Beam. I just... I thought I looked at the moveset before. I had no... Just recollection of Giga Drain. And this required me once again to alter my strategy and to leave. Whatever lead Suicune had has completely evaporated now, but I have a pretty good strategy. So we're level 66. We one-shot Pikachu and... We're going to use Blizzard. Of course, we miss, and then we hit, which is good, because Blizzard, unlike Icy Wind, does half. And if Blizzard does half, I don't have to worry about Rain Dance. I don't have to worry about messing around. I can just use two Blizzards. Yes, each hit is a 70% chance, but if I do hit twice, then Venusaur is done. I can try Rain Dance, but at the end of the day... I just need Blizzard to do its job. And it's frustrating because it's complete luck whether I get two hits in a row. And I don't even know what happens next. So on battle number three, we get a freeze, which is kind of nice because if we get a freeze, I can set up Rain Dance, make my Surf a little bit stronger. Pretty good stuff. And so with Rain Dance, I use Surf versus Espeon. Still not a one shot. It went for Reflect and then Psychic. So that's not great. Now out comes Snorlax. Surf does not great. And remember, it has Amnesia, which is going to boost... Oh, we just froze it. Okay, so I think in this game, things can thaw. Of course, I forgot to heal. I was doing some battling to get the money I needed to get Blizzard. So I am going to run out of Surfs, but we've made it past the Snorlax. And now we've made it to Blastoise, which I have no PowerPoints for. Hooray. 
But even if I did, well, actually, I think we would have won. I think this would have been fine. Okay, I'm going to retry this. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of pissed, but all right, this is looking okay. Wait a second. No, it isn't. We got a freeze versus Snorlax. What if that didn't happen? Well, I thought I had a good plan for that. So you'll notice Rain Dance is gone. It's been replaced with another move, and that move should help. Not against Venusaur. Once again, we just need luck. We missed Blizzard number one, but since we could get a crit or a freeze, I go for a second one, and hey, we get the crit. Pretty good. So that's what we need. Now, I don't care that the sun is out because I can use Toxic and Protect to try and stall out Espeon. And this is pretty useful because we need a lot more HP than we have. Now, I can't gain more HP without leveling up unless I use something like Protect and just restore the HP I already have. Now, for Snorlax, I go for Toxic after it goes for Amnesia. I went for Blizzard turn one just to try and get the Lucky Freeze. But here's the thing. I now have to try and manipulate Snorlax's HP so that it doesn't go for rest. And this is no guarantee because it does love to go for rest. We do manipulate the HP and get it not to go for rest. Unfortunately, we only have 36 HP after Protect. That's actually enough to tank the Surf. And with Protect, we actually could be good. At 33 HP, we're probably not. And Double Protect doesn't work, but hey, 2 HP. So Protect will work now because it just failed the last turn. 32 HP, well, we might survive on 1 HP. Nope, 2 HP again. We knock out Blastoise, and now all we need is for this to one-shot. And Charizard outspeeds. <laughs> all that and Charizard outsped me. Didn't see that coming. So we need a little bit more HP or a lot a bit more HP because that's probably going to do like 40, 50. Close, we're close. The strategy is close, but needs a little bit of tweaking. Well, as you can see, this is the very next attempt. Charm is good. We, oh, don't one shot. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. Just re-roll and there we go. We got the one shot. Okay, Venusaur, we hit with Blizzard. Get the freeze. Perfect. Don't really care if I get a freeze. Now it doesn't really matter. As long as we hit two blizzards or whatever, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go for Surf, and that's good. I don't need to rely on Toxic. Just knock out Espeon quick. Don't want the special defense drop. So, okay, we use Toxic turn one. This is a bit of an HP manipulation tactic, but we get a crit. So now everything is... Oh, we get two crits. So everything was completely out the window there, and that's GG. That's GG. I mean, I was trying to manipulate HP. I was trying to figure out exactly what to do but I'm wasting time a little bit just because I'm a little scared of how much Charizard will do to me. Since it does outspeed, I do have to be extra cautious of a critical hit or something. I'm probably not going to get an opportunity this good in a long, long time. How much does Charizard do to me with Wing Attack? That's not bad. I mean, I overdid it a little bit, but you know what? Honestly, without the leftovers and the stalling, we probably would only had like 10 or so HP left. So, pretty good strategy. And as we go to save, turns out, 701. So, in case you don't remember, these are our final times and levels. Entei at 68 at 701, Suicune at 67 at 701, and Raikou at 67 at 656. I am stunned the three legendary beasts all pretty much beat the game at the same time, at the same level. So, I'm gonna have to ask you guys, who do you think was the best legendary beast? I have a really hard time. I mean, realistically, I think Raikou has a very solid case. I mean, lowest level, lowest time. Then again, Suicune had to leave twice. And the Rain Dance strategy proved to be a dead end. So that was a bit of wasted time. Entei, you know, Entei feels about right. If I'm being as objective as possible, probably would go Suicune, Raikou, Entei. But there's a legitimate argument to be made for all of them. Then again, Suicune first trying the Elite Four is a huge plus in its favor. And seeing this makes me wonder whether the legendary birds would have an easier or harder time. Which bird is best? If you want to see that, let me know. Like the video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this a bit of a different style. But that's all for now. Thank you so, so much. Take care.